Google invited me down to Tasmania to dive in the giant kelp forest. Yay! But little did I know that 95% of the giant kelp forests are gone and all I got to dive with was this little plant. We are absolutely serious about that. We're not making this stuff up. Well, because I thought uh, we were going to go for a dive, swim through a little part of the kelp forest, and then see where you guys are doing your amazing work of restoring basically no wild kelp. Just... No, that's right, Kat. That's, that's the reality yeah. here. I'm not a morning person, unless that morning involves scuba diving somewhere on our beautiful blue planet. Here I am on an hour-long drive out from Hobart down to the Tasman Peninsula, where we're going to be diving with the kelp forests. Eagle Hawk Dive Center is a five-star paddy dive center, and they run lots of dives to Cathedral Cave as well as the kelp forests. Who invited me and a couple of other creators to see what was happening on the Great Southern Reef. I'm here at Eagle Hawk Dive Center and it seems so silly, but I got myself a Jacques Le Cousteau hat, the Cousteau Red. Uh, I've been wanting one of these ever since I've seen any of the documentaries featuring him. So yeah, now I'm going to be an official cold water diver. The water temperature is between 18 and 19 degrees. So I am a little bit nervous about that whole thing, but I got my spray jacket got my dive computer they managed to switch out my battery so that's amazing hopefully seeing some kelp so unfortunately because there has been a heat wave a lot of the kelp has broken off so we don't know what we'll see but we're hoping that we'll find at least some kelp somewhere but yeah i got seven mil with a thermal undergarment booties socks gloves uh it's got a hood i don't know if you can see that but yeah lots Lots of warmth coming in, and I'm gonna be positive and I'm not gonna freeze. Safe little bucket. As you guys know, traveling with scuba gear can be extremely annoying, so I was very happy that Google offered an extra luggage check in for me to bring my Hajaro BCD as well as my Scuba Pro regulators so I can be nice and comfortable on this very cold dive in Tasmanian waters. I set up the dive gear and then put it up on the boat before getting kitted up. Dive gear in there. The Eagle Hawk team brought us down to Pirate Bay in their bus and we waited on the side and admired their six meter cat. So we're here just waiting for the boat to be put into the water. The water is looking beautiful, but the wind is pretty chilly. So I'm very happy to have my Jeff still have. The best part of any dive trip is meeting other like-minded scuba divers from all around the world. I was so excited to also have Cam from We Are Explorers on board, who's an absolute legend in all things editing. He is hilarious and it was pretty fun watching him try and snorkel. I mean, maybe next time I'll take We Are Explorers scuba diving? What do you think? Ooh, it's a good arch. Along with the spectacular cliffs, we also got a show of the Australian sea lion. Oh, he's getting into the lake. Oh. Woo! In, that, in the far corner of that bay, just right there, that was the last uh, part of the kelp forest, natural kelp forest, where we could take divers into for just a scenic dive. And that was in 2015. So there's no dive spots that people can no, go? Not, not now. Hopefully with our restoration site, we might be able to take divers there. But we need a, a proper forest to, to make it a, a dive, you know? Mm -hmm. You cannot go down there for just 10 minutes because you have only a few hands. Honestly, until this moment, I had really thought that we were traveling down to Tasmania to go dive in giant kelp forests, the forest that I have been seeing on TV and in documentaries for so many years. But the reality is 95% of the giant kelp population in Tasmania is missing due to climate change and changing nutrients in the water. The East Australian current is getting stronger, bringing down less nutrient-dense water, causing the giant kelp to simply die of starvation and from the heat stress. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that first splash into the water was pretty traumatizing, but the seven millimeter kept me nice and warm. And it was time to see the giant kelp. This is what we saw.
giant kelp forests used to cover most of the coastline of Tasmania, but now only 5% of the natural forests remain. All the giant kelp that you're seeing in this video are individuals that were planted out from lab-grown kelp, grown to improve the resiliency in the hope of finding a strain that can survive the climate change and our changing water temperatures. that underwater we would be seeing some bleaching effects on kelp. Did you guys know that kelp also experienced bleaching? I guess this is an underwater staple of any stressed species, coral, kelp. As soon as the water becomes uninhabitable for them, whether it's from the nutrient, pH, or temperature, you see this little white bleaching where the algae simply leaves the leaf, the structure. And these ones were not doing too good. As Paul mentioned, these ones had been about two years old potentially and about 10 meters in length. We were diving at 10 to 14 meters of depth. While well, doing the dive was quite confronting, it's important to remember that. You know, there's no other ecosystem on earth where you can literally grow a forest in a year. You know, from planting out microscopic kelps, um, that are just, you know, a meal or so in size. Within nine months, these things are over 12 meters tall and on the surface. Giant kelp on a good day can grow up to half a meter. Therefore, this restoration project is one that can potentially grow an entire forest in a year. And next year, they're gonna start out planting massive hectares. Based on that model, we've chosen 16 sites this year from St. Helens all the way down to the southern end of Bruny Island, south of us to trial outplanting of giant kelp. We have kelp in the water right now growing at those 16 sites and we're monitoring the survivorship and growth. Next week, I'm gonna be doing a video all about the work that they're doing in the lab. So make sure to stay tuned for me becoming a scientist for a day. So this is all the other little seaweed babies. Let's get back to the dive before I freeze because it turned out it was actually 16 degrees Celsius in the water. Here we can see all the individual kelp strands that they had planted about four meters across. They had little tags on them so you could see how old they are and what genetic strand they were. Of course, on top of the dangers of climate change with the changing water temperatures, there is another reason that the giant kelps in Australia are disappearing, and that is the sea urchin. While the long spine sea urchins are endemic to Australia, their territory is stretching further down south because now the water temperatures are higher and these guys can survive the winter. Here you can see the good endemic Tasmanian urchin on the left, the blue one, and then the bad one, which is the long spine sea urchin on the right. Luckily, there's been a lot of governmental research and work into actually going down there and doing culling programs to kill the sea urchins. Remind you of the Crown of Thorns program, anyone? Anyway, after about 45 minutes, I was getting pretty chilly underwater. I tried to show you my depth and dive time. It was time to wave goodbye to the kelp beds and head up to the surface, where uh, I earned a very delicious hot miso soup. Thank you to the dive team at Eagle Hawk for making this day absolutely incredible. After I was warmed up with my miso soup, I decided I needed another snack, and Paul from the Nature Conservancy said this was the ultimate seaweed snack. It kind of tasted like sand, but then again, it was absolutely delicious. The flavor is good. It's silly noodles. It definitely, it definitely feels like you're eating sand though. Crunchy. Alright, I'm obsessed. I would I would survive on you that one for sure. Really common. Now, as a side note, when I first went diving, I saw a bunch of this other kelp and I was like, what is the big deal? We have this kelp, why do we need the giant kelp? As opposed to a giant forest which spans 60 meters in length, creating a whole dimension of underwater structure. Golden kelp is much shorter to the ground, so it only creates about one to two meters of actual space for marine life to inhabit. There's also this crayweed, which again, if you watch the Weir Explorers video, you can see is very important to our ecosystems around Sydney. So yes, the kelp is not all dead. 
At the end of the dive, we headed back to Eagle Hawk Dive Center, and of course, I had to wash all of my dive gear to get rid of all the salt. And being the genius I am, I forgot my dive computer and thermal <laughs> at Eagle Hawk. So thank you, Eagle Hawk, once again, for not only taking me out for a beautiful day of diving, but also shipping me my stuff back because yeah. I'm a forgetful person. 95% of kelp being missing is really scary, and the fact I didn't get to dive in a kelp forest is heartbreaking. But to make sure that our future is kelp forest filled, we need to support projects that help support kelp restoration. Next week, I'm gonna have a video all about the science behind kelp, so make sure you're tuned in for that to learn more. Brutal reality, and what you saw today is the reason why we are doing this, this project.